All right, so today, I'm back with The Witcher 3. In a weird situation of, we're just gonna continue some random side stuff. But, as you may have noticed, Geralt doesn't exactly have the gear or anything, and the story progression seems to be a bit behind from where we were when I finished the DLC, the Blood and Wine DLC months ago. So, we're gonna, we're gonna be prefacing today with a little adventure, a little sub-adventure of cleaning up something that I tried to do two years ago in part 20 of the playthrough, which is using the free cam to explore the world of through space and time, through time and space. The mission where we travel to multiple worlds with Avalok towards the end of the main normal story campaign. So, I back in January, I played through an amount of the game again uh, from a previous save of that playthrough to get here. So, I'm just going to keep it as quick as I can because I've honestly done this like two times and... The first time took about an hour and a half to talk and show things that I wanted to in this. And then the second time I did it took about 40 minutes. So I'm going to try and keep this as condensed as I can. The passage is here, past this wall. I'm going to be skipping cutscenes because we've seen this all already through the playthrough. This... Once we... Yes, remember. It's... It's... Yes, you hate portals, Geralt, we know that. Let's just get to the Dytowith Desert and begin. And at the end of this section, I will show a long distance map of everything that's in this map to kind of just let you see a big overhead view of it because I'm just going to be using the camera, discussing things, talking about anything that I found in this map and uh, a few reasonings behind what I'm doing. Where are we? Welcome to the Dido-Wet Desert. There's somewhere in our world. Ever seen such canyons in your world? Come, we must go. They're gonna be doing some dialogue here, so I'm just gonna let them talk it out. What is this place? A very old world, thoroughly raped and destroyed. Anything live here? If I use the camera, mainly desert creatures, able to survive months It won't stop their dialogue, so I'm just going to let them talk it out. Sand crabs beneath the surface. We must be careful they don't sense us. I do love this dialogue anyway. And before, were there any people or elves? Do you do believe the humanoids have a monopoly on destroying worlds? So what did live here? Sentient monsters of some sort? Look at those cliffs. Remind you of anything? Hmm. Look a bit like the bed of a giant river. Or the bottom of a sea. Mean there were water creatures here once? No creatures. Merely a sea. Trying to say that... That there are many different worlds and even more forms of life. Many of them intelligent, much more so in fact than you humans. But as it turns out, not even that could stop them from exhausting all the resources of their world to the last drop. I think that's the end of their dialogue. All right. So, this is immediately different from two years ago, in where the FOV was terribly zoomed in all the way, so I had to traverse the map like this and try to get some bearings of where I was. So this is why I'm redoing this, and I've spent a long time trying to figure out how to do this properly. It is going to ruin a bit of my water, but that doesn't matter. Uh, da -da -da -da. Get my FOV back to kind of normal. Is that normal, or is that a bit zoomed out? I think this is normal. So I finally figured out how to control the FOV with the camera. It was stupid how... I never really figured that out during basically the entire playthrough. But now I know. A few years after uh, starting to use this thing. So. This is the Dino Desert. It's kind of big. 
I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna swap to keyboard and mouse so things can go a lot faster. Whoop. So yes, there's gonna be a lot of nerd technical jargon talk. Not exactly technical, just rough technical about discussing what we're looking at here because this is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of nothing in this map. So this is the Dido Web Desert. This is its full scale. Uh, the map I drew out and I put at the beginning of part 21, which I kind of just roughly estimated from the bad attempt at this that I did two years ago, was kind of accurate, weirdly enough. Not entirely, but mostly accurate. In that everything is kind of layered side by side progressively on this map. This is just a giant, probably blank map chunk that they just put here and then drew on with their tool sets and uh, paint brushes and such and leveling tools to kind of meld this into what they wanted for this mission. This map is entirely exclusive of all the other maps. It is by itself a standalone realm. And I don't think there's any other way to get to this place unless you actually do the missions and such, which is why... I initially, in the playthrough, was so excited to finally get to this place was because I had to play through the game again to get to here. And years ago, many years ago, when I was trying to figure out, like, how is there a code? Like, is there some sort of location code I can use to warp Geralt to to get this far in the game to get to this map even just by itself? And the general consensus, at least years ago, I don't know what it is now because I haven't done any research on this, but uh, the general consensus years ago was that, no, you had to get to this mission to get to this map. It's a triggered map. The same way a lot of events in this map are triggered, and they are trigger exclusive unless you progress this mission. That seems to be kind of a consistent thing with this map, is that, like, uh, there's this portal down here. You think, oh, I can warp I can warp Geralt here, and maybe I can break the mission and skip forward to when we get sent underwater. No, the portal does not work at all until you actually progress with Avalok through here. Same goes for a few other triggers, and a lot of things like the skybox, that is why we are keeping Geralt down here and not progressing at all with Avalok at the moment, is because we want this skybox to be bright and nice so we can see everything if we generally go to any of these other maps it's gonna not be good it's not gonna be a fun time because all the other maps areas that we explore on this map are darker and or have other sfx and visual effects like if we go in here we're just gonna hear this pretty much the whole time if we go out of this map and it's gonna get kind of annoying so by going into this area before we get to it the SFX is not linked to us, and we can explore the map and get out of it without having it constantly around us. Anyway. Alright. Talking a thousand miles a minute here. So, what is this? This is a giant map filled with a whole lot of nothing for specific areas for this single mission. I have dropped Geralt into many parts of it to try and figure out if anything else will render, are there any other hidden objects or anything like that, and to my tests I have found virtually nothing. The majority of this land in this map, it, it has no collision. So you can't really have Geralt run around out here in this wilderness, all this land you see he cannot touch, he will fall through the map. The only areas that really have any collision are the areas you are supposed to be in, such as the Dydewith Desert area right there, the Poison Swamp over here, in the limited areas you can explore in it. The Frozen Town, up here in the Frozen Wasteland, way back there with the Lighthouse. And Tianelia, up over here. Well, the Monastery, Castle, whatever this building over here is that you meet Gels at. This has Collision. The only out-of-bounds weird collision I've been able to find has been this building down here, like this land off to the side with this building for some reason has collision. I don't know why, it just does. So, I get a, a second to catch my breath. <laughs> 
So if Geralt can't walk anywhere, how have I been able to just put him around the map and explore and let things render in to see if anything actually exists? The secret to that that I have found out through testing is water. All bodies of water that are above ground in this game seem to have permanent collision to them. I can't say for every single instance in this game, but at least in this map and in the general overworld game, they all have collision. So I can bring Geralt here and he will be able to swim in it. If he were to swim into that wall, he would fall off the world. And bringing Geralt into a uh, location that you drop him in renders everything around him in its proper visual rendering method. It, like as if he's actually there in the overworld. Th so things aren't low poly anymore, although unless they actually just are low poly. So it renders things correctly is the simple way to put it. The not talkative way to put it. So you can see just as... Like, how large a scale of the paintbrush and tool sets the developers were using. So you have this giant circular just paintbrush dab of this single texture that was done here. Relative to Geralt, who is a tiny little atom in that pool of water down there. These were big tools they were using to create this world. And just the game in general. So, let me talk about this map in general. I've already kind of covered the main basic areas, which is that over there. The stuff that's over here seems either unfinished or test... It seems like uh, a lot of things that were either just not done, incomplete, or they were just messing around. I'm not sure if this is stuff that they were thinking about making into other areas or what. We'll never know unless a developer says. But... We have this weird island area out here that seems handcrafted on the edge of the map because if you look at the map radius, this would have all been flat land like the rest of it. And it's been compressed down into the water and this small island formation area has been kind of formed by somebody. There are trees out here as well. Bringing Geralt out here on the water's edge, he will fall through the map if he clip, if he like, tries to swim into this, he will fall through the map if he tries to get onto land here. If I bring him here, the trees will render in a higher resolution than what they're showing here. These are pretty all right at the moment. They have shading and such, but they will be higher quality if I were to bring him here. But aside from that, there's nothing out here. One thing I do want to do is bring Geralt out over here because you see this... There's this giant line that goes through this mountain peak. And there's a reason for that. I don't know if a developer was having a little fun out here, but... Let me just show you the severity of what the toolset can do when rendered in high res in its proper orientation. You can see that mountain just form all its little jagged edges to make it more textured and such. So this is what... Uh, land formation normally looks like in the game. But then you got this. <laughs> then you got this. And this scared me. This authentically scared me. Geralt is underwater for some reason. Let me go back to him. What are you doing? Do not drown. I know you were scared of these terminally high heights that are right next to you, but do not do that, Geralt. They're not gonna hurt you. This is some extreme land deformation. I never see this in the game, and it's amazing because it's just this. It's just a pretty solid flat plane, and then it just terminates in this. And it goes through the whole mountain, too. But yeah, even the shadows from the sun are rendering on these objects. It's just impressive to me. This is really impressive. And yeah, it kind of cuts through this whole thing. It starts to get a little bit lower poly when we get away from Geralt a bit, and then it kind of just fades away into non-existence, both in the fact that it doesn't exist, and if it kept going, it would just turn back into like a flat texture eventually. So, that's a little bit of fun. That was an odd, that's, that is an oddity on this map, is just that weird cut through the land. 
uh, you'll see a lot of like overlapping paint strokes from probably either just developers messing around or trying to just being indecisive about how to color in a landscape. Uh, if we go way out of bounds, out over this way, which is far away from Tiernalia, I'm seeing like some weird tech. I am actually seeing, I think that, nope, that's just the land kind of rendering. You, saw, you see those kind of like textures kind of warbling in and out like this. Ooh, yeah. The underside of the map is a little uh, extreme in its texturing, I will say. So Tiernalia is on the front of the on the front underside facing of that mountain right there. It's at the bottom of the mountain there. I'm trying to talk real fast, so my mind's getting jumbled in words sometimes. Sorry. So, because I want I want to rush this along, I want to get back to actually playing the game. Uh, but I also want to show this off real quick because I want to get it over with because I've done this a couple times on my own and it is a lot of stuff. So, out here on the fringe corner of this map, everything's very low polygon. Well, very low poly uh, in its land formation. And it's kind of funny because you see like the break off. And I'm like, yeah, there's some modest stuff in the back here. It's like, ooh, this looks like a giant N64 quality texture right here. Look at this. That's funny. Uh, there is nothing hidden to my knowledge on the map itself in terms of actual like overworld objects except for one i'm not sure if there's any others that i just have not been able to locate from flying my cam around or bringing Geralt places but there is one object in this map that is just out of bounds and i do not know why it is there for the love of me if I can find it, it should be around here. I think it's over here. Yep, right here. Just on this little hill that's right next to this last castle. Low poly castle render. I believe this is the same one that's used to represent Vizima in White Orchard. That's like done up three times there, even under the map. We did that in the playthrough. I'll show that off. But this is the only object in the whole map that is just out of bounds. And... It's just some elven ruin platforms. It might be leftovers from the Tiernelia area where you meet Gels. It doesn't have proper collision to it. It does have a form of collision to it, but not proper. If I were to bring Geralt here, he'll just start swimming in the air, endlessly falling on top of it. It's a similar collision that happens if you teleport Geralt on top of boats for some reason. I'm not going to bring him here just because it won't really... Well, I may as well. This. He just does this. So, I can at least rest assured that I know Geralt is here. He will be here forever in pain and suffering of wondering why his god has done this to him. So... If I were to bring him over here. It'll kind of render things in a little bit cleaner. You'll see that this thing has no higher poly model attached to it. It will permanently stay this way even if Geralt is right in front of it. He himself can fully just look up at it and be like, oh, man, this PlayStation 1 game is looking pretty good. So... Tiernalia itself has nothing too impressive to it. It's a lot of uh, mishmashed things that are kind of crashing into each other a bit. I can bring Geralt here, sure. Just to kind of... The bridges, weirdly enough, do kind of have a slightly higher poly model to them. But yeah, none of this has collision. The lighting effects that you see on the windows in Tiernalia during the, because it's kind of evening, it's kind of like late evening, kind of a comfy evening. When we do come here and confront Gels, you'll see in the distance that some of the buildings have lights on in the distance. And that is done by these textures that are lit up to kind of give it the look some of them are inside and some of them are outside of the buildings. Everything here is kind of just thrown together. It's far off in the distance, so you won't really notice it. 
Some of it is decent, like this bridge here that then has a road that leads nowhere. That kind of looks like it goes into the town and such. It, uh, that road seems to end as soon as this castle begins. But, yeah. And yeah, I can bring Geralt all the way down into this water and everything if I wanted to. The waterfalls here use an interesting technique in that the, gra the gradation of the deep water to the light water to it falling over the waterfall is literally just grass. They pulled this... <laughs> they gave it a pretty convincing effect of making it look like the water gets thinner from a distance by just coloring it to as grass. So it looks very visually convincing this way. And I, I give him props for that. It looks very nice. It, I'm surprised that it works, but it does. Funny enough, right off to the side of uh, where you meet Gels, there's this giant paint stroke from somebody that's just a giant dirt texture and flat land here. I don't know what this is or why. Maybe they were clearing space to kind of maybe use it for some of this, but it was never done. I don't know. It's all speculation. And the last stop we have here today is the Frozen Wasteland. As the SFX kicks in. So, there's not a whole lot going on here. Uh, that's the sad part, is that there's actually not a whole lot going on here in general. Uh, actually, a lot of this seems to be de-rendered because I have Geralt in Tianilia. So, I hope that doesn't affect the buildings, because I want to show one of the buildings in this map. One of them has dev textures, which is extremely rare to find in this game. I think it's this one. It's inside of a window. Keep in mind that most of the, virtually all of these are underneath the ground. I'm going to bring Geralt back to the Dido'ith Desert. Just so this area kind of renders in a bit more properly. It seems to be rendering weird because he's in Tianilia at the moment. Actually, the whole, this whole map seems to be rendering in weird because he's over there. Uh, da, da, da. okay, there's the portal. I'm, wow, I'm really having to just, like, go off of the grass and such that's here. Uh, I'm gonna bring him here. And he died. That's fine. We can start over. That is totally fine. We might have to listen to their little jargon again. I'm just gonna go, and if they keep going with it, then sure. Welcome to the Dido-wet desert. Ever seen such canyons in you? Okay, so the dialogue is going to uh, keep going as text, maybe. I don't know what's going on with it. I don't care at this point. Normally it continues, so maybe just dying and doing all that's different. Yeah, he, he's still talking, so. Alright, so this is how the map's supposed to look. There's all these buildings. There's not much going on with these buildings. They're all just plunked down in this area. I will say some of them are huge for what little you see of them. Like this is all this. It's a full-on tower that's just never seen. And that's the case with most of these. There, there's a lot of pretty sizable, full-size buildings down here that you just never see. Also, the underwater area, I will cut to this, but the underwater area where Geralt teleports after the Poison Swamp is right there. That is it in its entirety. It is in this giant water blob that is underneath the map that I've always generally been kind of scared to go into when I've explored this map. But, this is it. Just like with the Poison Swamp, if I were to bring Geralt in here and teleport him into that, it will not work. This will just not render as a teleportation point, because the game has not allowed it to. Yet. Anyway. 
Right, so this is where Geralt blasts through to get out into the open air. Yeah. So, the dev texture. Is it in here? No. Is it in here? Nope. Do not mind the clouds at the bottom of the world. We're just house hunting right now. It's in a tower. I know that. It's in one of these towers. Nope. Maybe it's on the outside. Underneath. Man, where the heck is it? I do like how the lighting from the Didoith kind of casts a shadow on this wall below the world for all the buildings. You can also see how they use water in this game. Kind of similar to Breath of the Wild in that they have a water layer that's base. Almost as dumb as this is going to sound. Kind of like Roller Coaster Tycoon. They can put a texture down and then raise up the water level to whatever level that they want. So... That's what they're doing here, is they're raising it all up here. Maybe it's further in town. Of course, I can't find it now that I'm trying to find it. There's nothing in here. I really thought it was inside this one. I guess not. Is there any others that are just like hiding anywhere? I'm looking for a big building and I'm asking if it's hiding anywhere. <laughs> If any of this is making you dizzy or sick, I am very sorry. It's making me a little nauseous as well, but I also have weird vertigo stuff. So, I'm just kind of trudging through it. Uh, is, it uh, is it facing the town? No. I want to show the dev texture, please. Everything has been smooth up until this point. Now this is the hitch, really? Is it this one? No. It's inside a window. That's the annoying part. It's very small. Well, relatively small. It's like it's on the upper part of it, too, so... Maybe I should be lower inside the tower and just look up... ...when I do this. It's not here. Does not seem to be here. Does not seem to be here. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Wait! Ooh, there it is! It's not in one of the towers, it's here. There we are! What, what building is this? It's just one of these random town buildings. That's just really under the snow. Ooh, it's even on the chimney! I didn't know that. Yeah, so this. Ooh, let me get in there. So here we are. Dev textures. You never see this in The Witcher 3. At least I don't. 
delete. Please delete. Outdated mesh. Please delete. Outdated mesh. Lots of exclamation points in red. There we go. This is what I wanted to show. That's about it for this whole thing. It's just inside that random building there. It's kind of quiet without the wind gusting now. <sighs> yeah, just kind of a big aerial shot. It's a little weird how a lot of this map is like carefully constructed. It's all very limited in what you see, and that's very intentional because so much of this map just has nothing. Is that water? I'm kind of tempted to bring Geralt out here into the Dytoweth. There is a little patch of water out here, which is kind of nuts. Nope, it doesn't exist. Uh, I need to save him. Kinda. I don't really need to because we're kind of done here, but... Alright, so this water is not really water. Maybe. I'm gonna try again. I'm going to get him a little bit more on this deeper section. Maybe it's just too thin of a water layer. Nope, it just does not exist. The water is fake. So in that case, I'll bring him to some water that is real. Which would be over in this giant pressed down dune area that has some little lakes in it. I'm not sure what this area is. It is not used in the game. But this dune is massive and it's large. There we go. He's safe. So yeah, this has been uh, the Through Space and Time map. I can finally show it off properly and get everything that uh, I want to say about it through. I'll show the map here at the end, the full like aerial view map of it. Just so you can see how, wh where, how everything is properly layered here. One other small tiny tidbit, just so I don't forget it and be like, oh man, I should have said that later. Is that the skybox you see here for the Dytoweth with all like the wisping winds and such and little meteorite things that are kind of falling in through the atmosphere that you see off in the distance. That is all distance based with your character model. So if I go away, away from Geralt, it'll just disappear. And I don't know if that's the same for all the other like little skybox effects for the different places in this map, but I do know it's at least the case for the Dido with it just everything the planets and such they just disappear and you're left with the sun all right that's about it so we're gonna cut to just normal witcher 3 random side stuff because everything in the game is done at this point and i'm just gonna do some side stuff today to chill out and whatever just just play around with the witcher 3 Oh, one other, one, one tiny, tiny, tiny little extra thing. All the weird little red lights and such that you see in the poison swamp are hard baked into the rock formations here. So that is technically a texture, well, a lighting texture that is attached to the rock here. It's just coloration, kind of like what you would see in an N64 game, like in Banjo Kazooie, or even in something like Sonic R for the city track. Just, just kind of color, like saturated color that's baked onto the texture to give it a weird fake lighting effect that actually works pretty well. And the skeletons you see here very briefly because you're constantly running through this area are whales. They're just regular whale skeletons from Velen and Novigrad and Skellige, I guess. But that's it. That's it for all this. I don't think there's any other weird little tidbits about this map I can talk about. Uh, ba, ba, ba. If and I... Here's a little thing. If and I initiate the sand crabs when we're trying to leave here with Avalok. If and I bring Geralt back here after we teleport out, the sand crabs will still infinitely come and start attacking Geralt. They'll, they'll, st they'll still keep coming out of the ground. So... 
Yeah. They are monster models that are exclusive to this map. They're not hiding under the ground or anything. They are rendered in when they are called into place. But yeah, if you bring him back here after you leave, he those things will come back and kill you. <laughs> so yeah. Just gonna get some type of wide visual of this. The higher you go, you can really see like the developer tools and such, and them just kind of like dabbing around with it, especially the paintbrush strokes for what they were doing. There is an amount of culling that starts to happen at a distance just because of how massive this map is. But yeah, I'm gonna try to get it as decent as I can for just like a swoosh look. But yeah, all this is just not used. So much empty land that's all mountainous and everything. That's pretty much all this all the used land over there for what it is, and even that's just small little bites of it. All this is just not used. Alright. So gonna instantly transfer over to just playing The Witcher 3 normally now. Thank you for watching this little addendum to the front of this. Glad I can finally show this place off two years after I initially tried to properly. <laughs> Alright. All right, so today we're going to be just continuing with random quests in The Witcher 3. I hope you enjoyed the weird little preamble showing off the through time and space stuff. That that honestly was months in the making, both in me failing to elaborate and discuss what's, uh, what's going on in that map, and just feeling like the dis just you know when you fail at like conveying something and then like trying to do it again it's like it takes a little bit of confidence to do that and there's a reason why we are here in this map at the moment and that is i want to show off one little extra thing in the painted world so the moon in the painted world that we'll get to the actual random stuff quick. I've got that mission so uh, lined up on the side over there. So, the moon up over here in the painted world is a little weird. It, ac it at least acts a little weird, uh, weird here. I don't know... I know the lighting in this area is not proper for the actual mission when you're here during the Hearts of Stone DLC. But just, just watch the moon. There, when you enter this house, it gets oddly dark even in the game but it's exaggerated here to show off what's happening so just keep an eye on the moon i found this out last fall just, just watch this wait can i get okay we're going in through the door oh it's kind of ruining it <laughs> so yeah so as you are entering this building the uh got the estate. God, what's his name? Olgierd von Everick. The, Ever the von Everick estate. As you're entering the von Everick estate, the skybox lighting and the moon and everything is tied to the camera. It's not tied to Geralt specifically, to my knowledge, but it's tied to the camera. So if I move the camera into the house, it starts to adjust the skybox to change the lighting. And as you can see, it starts to get darker and darker. And as Geralt moves in, it makes it happen faster because the camera moves with Geralt normally. I'm not using the camera for any of this. This is just the game itself. So if you enter here, it just turns everything dark. It looks cool, but if and I move it back out, the moon just keeps popping up and out. <laughs> I don't think I've showed this before at any point in the playthrough. 
But this is what happens when you enter the Von Everk estate in the in the painted world. It just does this. <laughs> Peekaboo. Oh man, the sun's gone. Yeah. It's it's so it's so I am literally controlling galactic bodies in space through moving a camera. Just look at that. It's bouncing up and down like a bounce ball. Yeah, that is just... And then it, like, locks into place here. Because this is what you're supposed to normally see is this. It's supposed to just kind of get darker like this. And if you look outside, it looks dim. But, once again, I don't think you're supposed to walk back outside during this mission. Maybe the door closes behind you or something? Or the moon is just completely obfuscated behind a, a different skybox even? But with this current skybox we have here, we could just see the moon bouncing up and down and the sun going away. I assume the sun's doing the same thing. I can't see it from here. Yeah, I think the sun's doing the same thing. We just can't see it. Let me put Geralt in the house and maybe bring the camera. Does the camera in free cam change it? It does not. It breaks that limiter. So the sun is gone here. So it does control the sun as well. Whoa! Okay, the sun is supernova. Holy shit. Is this what people see when they're abducted by aliens? Is this, uh, is this like a texture or what? Sorry for the bright light. But I'm chasing it. Nah, we're good. Uh, oh, it's de-rendered a bunch of stuff because we got away from it. Okay. Yeah, so... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, Novigrad looks kind of cool with this shadow lighting off in the distance there. Where's Geralt? Is this the one I put Geralt in? I don't think so. This looks like the destroyed one. I put him in the nice one. Where's the nice one at? Here's the nice one. There we are. Okay, we're back. Okay, we're good. We're good. Everything's fine. So, we're gonna leave here, and uh, I'm just gonna put Geralt in Novigrad, and we're we're kind of done with the fun from that. Is the edge of the map? So that that's a little bonus. That's just a little bonus. Uh, free cam, weird, fun stuff that I've found over the past couple months. All right, we're going to put him in the town square. We're going to put him right next to the bank. Let everything render in. It's going to probably take a moment. Because the game's trying to understand where we are now. There's a dude up there. What is he doing up there? What the hell? Is this a spawn location? There's straight up just a dude in this building. I've never seen this before. Yeah, there's just a dude up here. Sometimes, I know in some parts of Novigrad, they have uh, spawn locations for NPCs hidden inside buildings. This might be that. But you normally see them drop in and out of the buildings when they're called in. Who knows? There's a dude up here, though. That's weird. It's not totally, like, an anomaly, but... Alright. Are those bats or birds? 
They're, they're t that's the stupidest question I could ask knowing how this game works now, actually. They're both. God, when I found out the bats are just the birds with swapped palettes, that's, that was, that broke me. Hey, Vimmy, how's it going? How can I be of service? Got some coin I'd like to convert into crowns. You've come to the right place. A better rate you'll not find anywhere in the city. Vimmy's always got our back. So, Tinker, Hunter, Spy, Soldier, Spy. Find the spy stash using your Witcher senses. Where is this? It's in Novigrad. Oh, it's all the way over by, uh, towards the Mead Works. We're gonna fast travel there. Since last time I played this for the channel, the remaster edition has come out. I actually just bought the physical version of it yesterday at a mall, and I might eventually play a bit of it. I've played it, I upgraded my PS4 version to the digital version and gave it a shot back in December of last year. And it wasn't impressive enough for me to kind of, like, mull over a, a replay of anything, really. Not even a show-off of it. It's not that impressive to me. It doesn't look too different than the PC version is already as a base game. So, also, there were... I wish I recorded it, but there were some uh, texturing issues. They probably patched this since then, because this was months ago. At least I hope they did. But uh, when I booted up the game on PS5 and started playing it, the shadow textures in the high fidelity version of the game, not the high performance for the high frame rates, but like the high quality graphics version of the game, it was messing with the shadow textures in all of the Kaer Morhen map. Just you'd look off in the mountains and all of them would just be f strobing and flickering and it actually kind of hurt my eyes a bit. So, I didn't like that, uh, but overall it didn't, it didn't look too visually different than what the game already does. Some of the shadows looked a little nicer, but I couldn't really tell much of a definition difference or improved textures or anything like that. I don't know. I was kind of maybe expecting something a bit more along the lines of a, this is a poor choice for comparison, but it's the kind of jump I was expecting was like Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast to Sonic Adventure DX where they kind of actually improve some of the models and such. I didn't I didn't see much of any of that. At least in like the two hours I played of it. I played through the White Orchard thing just because I, the White Orchard beginning just because I wanted to see if anything had really changed much and nothing really did too much from what I noticed. So I have it. If I play the game again through, it will probably be the remastered edition, just because. Because currently it's the only version of the game I have not really played much any of. I enjoyed the Switch version even, mainly just because it's portable, but it looks pretty damn good on the Switch in portable mode. And it's, it's just a fun game for me, it's my favorite game. But yeah, I, I was not too impressed with the remaster, it's fine. It probably fixes a couple things, and it probably breaks a couple things. I saw the breaking plenty in the uh, shadows. But anyway, we're, we're still playing this.
So we're looking for a stash. Uh, it's right below the pier. is there in Novigrad. There's a few things. We could do a uh, wolf school gear upgrade scavenger hunt, but that would take a while. <laughs> From Ophir's distant shores. Find someone who can speak Ophiri. While wandering the Redanian borderlands, Geralt happened across some crafting diagrams written in a foreign tongue. He supposed the language was Ophiri, but not being a linguist, he could not be certain. Wanting to resolve the mystery, he decided to look for around for Ophiris, having made the indisputable deduction that where there are Ophiri documents, there must surely be Ophiris as well. What are you guys protecting? Just the, the orchard? Graceful. The upper mill. Oh, this is over here in the parts of stone area. I don't think I've explored too much of this stuff. You're a long way from Ophir. A long way and with a dangerous road. But in our homeland, they say, in a risk, there is honor. Got a ring to it. Not true in my experience, though. Face plenty of risks. Honor, not so much. Because risk issues from intent. Important is this intent. The long passage I brave to admire the unknown and bring glory to myself and my liege. The world we must explore. Virgin lands discover. New knowledge garner among our brothers than to spread. For is there in life a beauty greater than to admire the new? To stand in awe of the never-ending creation of the world. That mean I've landed in a camp of explorers and philosophers? <laughs> Indeed. Your customs we come to observe. Knowledge to exchange. And goods, naturally, to trade. Your homeland. Be glad to hear some tales about it if you've got the time. If time you have. For of my home I could speak until your ears withered and your legs failed you. What here they call Ophir, in truth, is many diverse polities and peoples. A land it is of vast steppes, mountains forbidding, lakes clear as crystal, and wild lands untouched. A land of fallen empires, kingdoms at their peak, and tribes that know no monarchs, yet remember in myth a time when the world was young. You call any of these lands home? Yes. A town with towers to make Nilfgaard weep with envy. Of philosophers, doctors, mathematicians, and the mages an enclave. But about these last you should, my friend, interrogate, for one among them is he, a rune right. I'll make it a point to talk to him. Yeah, Ophir is an area in the Witcher world that isn't explored or talked about too much. It is south of Nilfgaard, and it's the kind of the reason why Nilfgaard is choosing to invade the Northern Realms is because the Northern Realms kind of suck. <laughs> they're not very strong, and they're... It's... It, historically, it's similar to just the Saxons and... the different kingdoms of, like, the UK and such. Like, during, during like, the... What's a dumb way to explain it? If you played Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it's like all the different kingdoms fighting each other while the Vikings are invading. It's it's a bunch of different random kingdoms that are just constantly squabbling with each other for land and power. And Nilfgaard is taking advantage of that against the Northern Realms because they're all split and fractured and they don't assume that they're going to like team up and help each other. And for some of that, it's occasionally true. But some of them have... at this point in The Witcher 3, a lot of them have kind of banded together and be like, okay, we've lost, like, Sintra, and Kedwin's weird at the moment. We're gonna 
we're gonna need to, like, actually fight these guys. <laughs> Otherwise, they're gonna take us over. But uh, the reason Nilfgaard's doing that to them is because, yeah, they suck. And Ophir is actually very powerful, as he, as this guy explained. Yeah, it's a lot of different random kingdoms and tribes and everything down there. But they are very powerful, and they are very skilled people compared to the Northern Realms. <laughs> they kicked Nilfgaard's at Like, Nilfgaard has put invasions on Ophir, but they've always gotten their ass kicked. So they're like, screw that. We're going north. We're going to go fight there. And so far, that's where they've taken their foothold at the moment. Quite the mount you've got. Ah, yes. A loyal friend I have in Babietza, and she is wiser than many a man. Countless races we have won together. So, an explorer and a jockey in one. From where I come, small children ride, and not a gathering is by a horse race not crowned. So yeah, everything this dude's being pompous about, about like, my homeland is magical and amazing, it makes Nilfgaard weep. All that stuff, that is all, he, he has the backing for it, that is all true. I would love, I would love an, a, a proper exploration of Ophir with the Witcher world. We arrived in this land to immediate trouble. Local men, frankly rogues, attacked we were. These are good instructions to forge fantastic gears fit for a king. To the ruler here I was to present them. But assist me. Retrieve the entire set, and I shall draft duplicates marked in the tongue of your craftsmen. Sounds like a fair deal. I think I can probably find those diagrams for you. These bandits, they night seem. They blow even harder. Where did it happen, this attack? At the crossroads. A sawmill near to it. And the ruins of a residence to the north, I believe. See what I can do. Farewell. All right, so we're going to fight some bandits. That's a pretty standard mission. We'll see if it's for some reason got some twist on it. You know what I haven't encountered too much just randomly in this whole playthrough? Fleshens. I've encountered them for missions, but not just randomly out in the woods. Maybe it's just because I generally know where they are. There's not too many of them in the game, and when you find them, it is entire- it is one of the most terrifying things when you find a Leshen out in the woods, just randomly, and you're kind of stuck fighting it. Uh... I might as well fight these guys. Split him in half. Split him in half. Ooh, we got another archer. I do not need their weapons. Uh, how much weight do I have at the moment? Yeah, I can't- I already have a lot of stuff on me, actually, at the moment. I need to sell things. I'll do that after this mission's done, because I cannot carry any of these weapons. A lot of these guys are just chilling out here in the woods eating chicken. I kind of feel bad about that now. The Order of the Flaming Rose is scum, but still. They were having a nice meal. Ooh, I caught him off guard. Nice shield you got there, bud. <laughs> Maybe next time learn how to use it. And you'll never walk again, and you'll never breathe again. What do we got? Something. Oh man, that's... this is some good stuff. I 
I need to, like, drop things. Is there any crap weapons that I can just drop? Ducal Guardsman Sword. I don't need that. No, I don't need that. Uh, these crossbows I don't need. What about the armor? Right, so after this mission, I need to do some housekeeping on my inventory. I need to go back to Toussaint, I need to put the armors that I want to keep in my house, and I need to sell things that I just do not need. Because I have a pretty stuffed inventory at the moment, which is a little bit of a problem. I'm gonna see if there's anything up here. Nope. Carol, come on. Mm, looks like a whole lot of nothing. Zutzer Castle. That's a new fast travel point. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure we went and got one of the scrolls a little early. Because that, that should be one of the ones we were looking for, but the quest marker didn't ask for it. Oh yeah, we already have two, so we already have one from probably some other earlier misadventure. We gotta go over here, whatever's in this forest. And then there's one more. So we're doing pretty good on this already. Oh! This is that town, remember? Uh, where, with the cannibals? Now it's full of monsters. Devoured by necrophages. Poetic justice at its best. Ha! <laughs> yeah, these were the two cannibals from earlier. Oh, that's how we get the key to get into the house. I like how one of the Algul limbs just flew through the window. <laughs> yeah, before we continue, let's take a look around inside the house. I don't think I've been in... I, I know I've been in here messing around, but... I don't know if I've actually just been in here properly. Locked. Is there anything in there? I forget. No, it is just a sealed room. I've probably warped in here to grab what was in here in the past. 
knowing me. Like, whatever was in that chest. And I'm pretty sure that door is just for visual storytelling. So, let's continue. Their encampment is not too far away now. Looks like it's right up here. Lumberjacks. Is there anything else here? Nope. Trail's gone cold. Mm. Need to look around. See if I can pick it up again. Someone was wounded. Started bleeding heavily. Wonder what this means. Traveler hostage, I guess. Blood trails the hostages. Must have been a burden if they left him here to die. Lost the trail. Gotta look around for something else. Well, the footprints continue in this direction, so... I mean, I guess we're just kind of... Ooh, there. Yeah. This way. We really are kind of in the middle of nowhere. Trail ends here. Mm. Dirt and ground cover concealing a hatch. Secret passageway. Down we go into the depths. Oh, you guys have an underground secret base here in the Legion of Doom. Evil things happen. Face me. Chicken. Man, these fallen knights love chicken. There we go. Caroline. Man. Why does everything have to be so heavy? Am I using one of these? Is one of these better on my current? 75 stamina. Won't tire as easy. 90 stamina. 55. Uh, put the Knight's Errant Saddle on. That seems better. These sell for a decent amount. The Mastercraft one I will drop. <clears throat> All right, so we got one more to get. Is there anything up top? Mm. 
nope. Let's get out of here. What the? There's a lot of dead bodies up here, but what is it? Wolves or deer? Or... Oh, I'm stupid. It's the guys I killed underground. I'm like, why are there so many dead bodies over here? Read the letter I found. Rob, I've given you a whole month. And nothing. No progress. Diagrams are just as damn incomprehensible as when you started. So that's it. Enough fucking around. You to do the following. Keep one diagram and stare at it until you hit on something and send the rest of the other and send it to the rest of the other camps. I don't know. I'm butchering this now. Maybe some of the lads there ain't quite so dense and will manage to translate those damn scratchings into something we can use. Those alchemists in camp by the bee yards have spent most of their lives poring over books. So send on one of the drawings to them. Send a second to the band that occupies the brick ruins by the lake. One of the lads there was supposed to be ordained and revere, uh, reverend. He knows strange tongues, as do our transfer, as does our transfer base in the bogs. I'm kind of ditching the accent because it's way more than I expected to read. Near the abandoned village, a lad there was formerly a librarian's assistant. Send him the third diagram. Ulrich, P.S. For inspiration, try your hand at translating this. Rob, can me a be a, a, a ass? Okay, so he wrote that last bit in Elvish. I'm not a. I'm not allowed to read Elvish for this shitty accent voice. So there's just the one left, which is not far away. Lucky enough, it's just right over here. It's just some dudes in the woods. The cook has a mallet. The cook is dead. Oh, he's on fire. I love when they catch on fire. Take that mask off. You do not need it. You need to inhale the toxins. Do it. You need to do it. You need to inhale the toxins. Why don't you catch on fire when you touch this? Come on. It's fun. Oh, he actually got a hit. He just died by bleeding out. That was kind of funny to watch. Oh, no, 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 no. Put that sword down. Put the sword down now! Alright. 15th of Blaith. Our supply of formic acid grows thinner by the day. True. Master Ul... Ulrich. It's not Ulrich. It's Ulrich. Ulrich. Is it, I think it's Ehrlich. True, Master Ehrlich sent brethren to watch the high road, but I find it far-fetched to believe a caravan of alchemists will ride past them, hauling full barrels of acid any time soon. Ergo, we must try to prego, uh, pr procure some on our own, for otherwise there can be no talk of producing any more Fiztech. Okay, so these guys were producing Fiztech. That makes sense. Oh, God. 
so they were t they were doing like experiments of they're doing phys tech experiments out here, but like also having them get stung by bees. <laughs> <laughs> my good man. My my good man. You're a weirdo. Oh, look at his eyes. They're red. Probably from the bee stings. Huh. Weird. Who is this dude? He he looks like What are, what are all these rings on his hands? Uh He's very blinged up. Very stylish for just some cook in a bandit camp. What were they making? Is that cheese or bread? I don't know what that is. It kind of look... I, I'm going to guess it's supposed to be cheese, but it doesn't even look like cheese that's in this game. Alright, well we got everything. What's over here? There's something up here. Oh, there's another one. You were hiding. Were you taking a piss? You went off to take a piss in the woods and you come back to all your friends being dead. Okay, he didn't drop anything. Ooh, we got a bit of a walk. Yeah. It'd actually be faster if I went to Erd. And then fast travel. That's a bit of a walk. Hey, dude, I got all your scrolls. It is to see you again. Quite the pleasure. Managed to recover all your diagrams. Ah, want to be relied on. This I knew. You restore the faith I might have in me. For I've now received aid from a stranger in even this land most barbarous. Don't mention it, really. As agreed, I shall draft your duplicates, though it may take a day. Be so kind as to return tomorrow. Your reward I will have for you. All right. Tomorrow, then. Uh, we can just rest, then. That was the weirdest camera turn I've ever seen in this game. Like, going from a cutscene into a very dramatic, blurred camera turn around Geralt. That was odd. Sure, whatever. We got the Ophiri diagrams. And we have geese and gooses. Meese and mooses. Alright.
Champion of Tesha Mutna. <clears throat> I am he who serves the tribe. Exalted above men, I renounce human weakness. Uplifted above men, I become keeper of my flock. Filled with my strength, I turn my sword against his enemies of the tribe. I am master and slave. I am executor of the will of the tribe. I accept the sword and this armor so I may serve the tribe. I have no idea. <clears throat> no idea what that's about. Teshamutna is the... destroyed fortress in Tucson, so it's something from there. This is the, like, housekeeper's journal for the duchesses. Letter revealing the fifth victim. Oh, I hadn't even read that. That All that's, that's all old story stuff for the Blood and Wine DLC. Uh, what's this one here? This looks like an Elder Scroll. <laughs> summons. For, oh, this is the summons. That, that's for the beginning of it. Jeez. That's funny. All old uh, blood and wine stuff that doesn't matter anymore. Can I sell stuff to you? It is to see. What did you bring from a... Uh, da -ba -ba. Merchant does not have enough coin. Oh wait, was that, uh, oh god, that was Olgier von Everick's sword, wasn't it? Yeah. Damn it, now I have to buy it back. Now he has a ton of money. Man, I hate when that happens. I gotta get my money back now. It doesn't matter. I gotta offload this stuff anyway. Tesha Mutna stuff. Tassant gauntlets. Don't need. Flaming Rose stuff. I do not need. <clears throat> Turney armor. I don't believe I need. Tassant armor. I don't need. Whoa, the Tesha Mutna armor is expensive. Like, I don't want it. But yeah, that stuff's valuable, huh? Mask for picking mandrakes. <laughs> the wolf mask, the cool glasses, the donk- the ass ears, as they are actually called. I was gonna say the donkey ears, but no, they're just the, the ass ears. Uh, does he have anything I want? He has some Gwent cards. Gaunter Odim Darkness card. So he has a Darkness card for that. Uh, sure. Shiska Findabar. Eridin. What is this? Ophiri Saber? Sure. What is that? Draconid Leather. Well, now I can sell this stuff. Never-ending creation be praised. Farewell. Yeah, I need to, like, go to that bookseller in Novigrad and just sell a bunch of, uh, all this parchment I have. 
Where's that manuscript I just... Did it automatically allow me to just start making whatever that Ophiri Saber thing is? I thought I had to read that first. I don't see it in here. So I guess not. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm just able to. Okay. Alrighty. So what's the next quest? The Cursed Chapel. But first, we are going to sell... Well, uh, we're going to Toussaint. Which, yeah, we still have a... This is just me kind of wrapping up some extra stuff that I just have lying around. There's a lot of stuff to do in Toussaint. And in general, still around the game. So it's not like I'm, I'm short on... Uh, doing things for The Witcher 3. We're just done with all the main campaign story stuff. Everything else in this game, there's so much extra stuff. Corvo Bianco, this is our house. I believe the house is fully decked out. I think that's like one of the last things I did last time was fully upgrade the house or something. I said many months ago, maybe a year ago even, if I hear that stupid peacock... Oh, oh they multiplied! Peacocks! Peacocks! Look at them! They are beautiful. Ah! 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 I'm a normal person, trust me. Alright, how's it going, Major Domo? Can I, like, put stuff? Yep. Uh, da, ba, ba, ba. Toussaint Color Guardsman's Armor, Ducal Armor, the Feline, 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 Feline. Yep, this is the this is the armor that was in, uh, we used this armor for most of the game, I think, didn't we? Something like that. A good majority of it was using this armor. And, uh, yeah, we just kept upgrading it. This is what we used in, by the, by the file of uh, what we did at the start of this video. We had, uh, I think, the version of this armor before this? So this is the superior. I do like the, fem uh, the uh, feline armor set. It's very nice. It's very sleek. I like the blue, and I like the neck collar to it. Am I not wearing the Viper gauntlets for some reason? What am I wearing? What are my gloves? Picking Mandrake. Oh, I'm I'm wearing some old quest armor stuff for my my gloves. Weird. I'm just putting this stuff here just because I don't know about it. Well, no, no, no. This is this is stuff I can sell. Let me check everything, though. Mandrakes, Toussaint boots. Yeah, just take all. I can sell all this stuff. I don't have any paintings at the moment. My feline sword... Both of them. 
Ah, my two good swords for the feline set. What are my swords that I have now? Both the Viper? Yeah, we're keeping the Viper. A lot of armor stands. I need more like weapon stands. And the wonderful music of Toussaint starts. I'm just going to assume ones that don't have any runes in them are ones I just did not use. Torlun. I don't recognize any of these weapons, so they're sellable. Do I have anything else? Uh, oh, I can't put... Oh, man. I wanted to... Can I store it at least? I wanted, I've been keeping the caretaker's spade this whole time because I've wanted to keep it. I have a chest somewhere in this house. It's upstairs, I guess. I can't put it on display? That's lame. I was gonna say, something's wrong here. I, I briefly looked in here. There's just a floating cup and, uh... Candle. Everything's fine. It's magic. This is an enchanted house. I am so awesome, my house is enchanted. Letter from Regis. No, no, I want to read the letter from Regis. <clears throat> Dear Geralt, Oh, this is his goodbye letter. This is that's that's the sad thing I'd say is that yeah, Regis does leave after you finish Bloodwine DLC. That's sad, but you know he's off to better adventures. He's done messing around here with us, dear Geralt. If you are reading these words, it means I am already far beyond the borders of Tucson, and you have found my muted generator. Of course, you may dub this instrument however you like. Perhaps something more fitting to your taste or better reflecting its function. For I have no doubt your knowledge on the subject of mutagens is far more profound and thorough than mine. I have been working on this device in my spare time. But for now, it is finished and I am convinced, as convinced as an inventor can be for his invention has been used as intended, of the usefulness of this apparatus. You are surely wondering what function it is meant to serve. As the name indicates, the muta generator generates mutagens. It operates by absorbing electromagical energy waves from bodies, from bodies. In this case, the bodies of the monsters and evildoers you kill. <laughs> and when it has absorbed enough, so as to be charged a critical amount, the muta generator changes changes the stored energy into a greater mutagen, which I suspect you will make good use of. As you surely understand, I am an amateur engineer. Which is why you must forgive the lack of an ability for you to direct this operation, which mutagen emerges as a result, is determined at random, meaning, chan uh, meaning chance will decide if it is a green, red, or blue mutagen. Chance. Yet I have noted the colors tend to alternate, by and large. I trust you shall find the, my gift useful. Your dearly devoted friend, Emil Regis Rohalek Terzif Godfrey. Oh, there's more. P.S. You might be wondering why I decided to toss the muta generator into your home instead of simply handing it to you in person. Well, you must know I did so out of modesty. Believe it or not... Uh, oh, modest, modesty. Believe it or not. Oh, okay. I don't know what he means by that. 
Take care, Geralt, and may my gift serve you well. Goodbye, Regis. Is this just like everything I have ever gotten in my inventory as something to read? The Guardian Notes, Spies, Guide to Gwent, Scrawled Notes, Crumpled Notes, Old Map of Toussaint, Lab... Oh my god, I think this is like everything I have ever touched in the game in terms of literature. Okay. Sure, that was information overload. Right. Uh, is Triss still here? Yeah, she is. She's just she's just chilling out here with the peacocks. Yes, Geralt. I have nothing to say to you. Mind if I leave you here? Just a moment. Goes off for 20 hours doing other things. <laughs> One sad thing about doing the uh, H, like the remaster of this game, if if and I ever do. Um, I wouldn't have the free cam to like mess around with. Ooh, look at this FOV. This is like the problem I was having before. Is it normalish now? Okay, now it's kind of fixed. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All I I got rid of all my enhanced swallows, but that's fine. You know, that's fine. I wonder. We're away from Trist. Does she have melty face or anything? Uh, she's got stank face. I'm surprised she, her face is actually still attached to her body, but... Yeah, she's got stank face. <laughs> oh my god, Triss, you ain't looking so good. Okay, uh... Just, uh, make sure the cup goes in your mouth. All right, that's enough fun with that at the moment. So let's head back. I want to go to Novigrad, sell things, and then we can get back to a mission or two. But yeah, so I picked up the Witcher 3 physical version yesterday for the PS5. And I was sad to open it, and it was like, oh, there's no Witcher stickers inside. The The original ones came with stickers, and that was kind of nice, but this one didn't. So, eh, whatever. It's fine. The mall I went to itself was a bit weird, because it was way more busy than I've ever seen it. Uh, and I've been there on Black Friday even one year, and it was not as busy as when I went yesterday for some reason. I don't know why everyone was there. But uh, aside from that, it was pretty boring. Top not swords. Show me what. Oh, I forgot to put it this way. I'm just gonna sell it. Doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna keep these three. 
What is the... What is that armor? It's still not as good as mine. Very expensive. Zeriel armor. Okay. Eden Daith. What is that sword? Dancer. It looks cool. Uh, I'm gonna keep that just in case I need it. Probably don't, but oh well, yeah, there's like a thing to it, so I'm just gonna keep it. I'm gonna sell all this jewelry though. Oh, I, this guy has the sensor I had earlier in the game. So long. We also need to give Geralt a shave. I forget where the barber is here. I know I always go to the barber in Oxenford. Ah, you're back. Let's see these books of yours. I'm curious why these random objects are like mastercraft things. I'm just gonna sell them. But yeah, weird. I wanna keep the mirror. Bottle caps? Why are there bottle caps here? Is there soda in the Witcher world? Or beer? Or something? What is it? Fake tooth. Pouch filled with florins. Handkerchief monogrammed DLC. Monogrammed DLC. Are you shitting me? That is... CD Projekt, please. You're making me just I want a face palm but I can't. That that is that is that is goofery. That is just goofing. Wooden hammer. <clears throat> Farewell. Okay, we sold off some stuff. What's my inventory like? Very light, very nice. Light and nice is what we like. So, now we will continue with a random quest. The Cursed Chapel. Where is it? Once again, all the way out here. Uh, aside from the mall... Uh, I did grab actually the Metro the Metroid Prime remaster as a physical as well. I just randomly found it one day at a Best Buy. I haven't played it yet, but I will. It's probably not going to ever show up on the channel, but I'd like to just give it a try. Metroid Prime is all right. I've played it on the GameCube. I'm not a I wouldn't even say I'm much of a Metroid fan, but I enjoy the games. They're all right. Okay.
Spiders, lovely. These guys can run a very far distance away. You don't fight spiders too much in this game. So there's a house here? Yeah. Well, how'd he do? I think this place is cursed. I don't know why. The locals don't seem too nice. You know, if you're gonna make your place all spooky, you need to light up all your candles. The fact you didn't just shows me you're lazy. I got that for you, bud. What is this place? It looks a little cultish, just from the, the building design itself. <laughs> it seems very cultish. The Oxen Fur Curia of the Church of the Eternal Fire. Here by- wait. I thought I heard something. Okay, I thought it was another spider, like, creeping up on me. Hereby grants a, disp a dispossession, disp dispensation, whatever that means, from the duchy, from the duty of conducting worship in the chapel of the eternal fire to the residents of the following villages. Okay, whatever, I don't care. Uh, locked. Whatever. That voice is starting to scratch my throat, so I'm gonna stop doing it. Is there anything inside here? Alright. Fix the camera. There is nothing in here. You see, that's where understanding the camera controls a lot better now for me. Works wonderfully. Yeah, there's nothing in here. What the hell? Yeah, it's just two buildings kind of lodged together to make it seem big. Okay. And then there's a monastery back here. 
Let's go in through the window up here. What awaits us in the crypt? Rosebud. And burnt bodies with rope tied through the skulls of whatever that is. How much you bet there's going to be like a Bruxa down here or something? It's either going to be a Bruxa or Wraiths. Is there anything below? No. Wow, look how the rain texture works. That's funny. It like pans through three layers. You see that? It's like two or three layers. One, two, three. Yeah, it pans through like three different layers of rain to give the visual effect. Huh. I have a feeling, given this one was a pool of water with rosebuds, there's going to be more wraiths down there. Probably. Alright, be that way, candle. Don't light. Turn the lights on in here. <sighs> Cursed mother. Okay. Ooh, it's ugly. Put down a yarden. Put down a yarden. Thank you. Ah, oh, great. Come on. Get into the circle. Get into the circle. It's the fun circle. Get into the playpen. Come on. Yeah! Do I have any oils? I like how the music's still just like the spooky crypt music. It's not intense or anything. It's pretty chill. Hybrid, relict, beast, curse. Yeah, is this a curse? No, I don't think so. Necrophage, vampire, specter. There we go. Edbert's farewell. I've not left. Not a blooming thing. All I can do now. Passed on my family's tale of horror and woe, then pass on myself. Soon as I've written it all up in this letter. I'm not going to read all this and that, so. <clears throat> Seems like a faded dream now, but there was a time when we were happy. My beautiful wife, Ornesta, and myself. We were married in high style with a fitting feast. Then a year later out, our dear Mildberga was born. Folk praised the Ween's beauty. Said she was the spitting image of her mom. Ornesta'd get all cross when they'd talk like that, but I paid it no heed at the time. Soon enough, our family grew. I don't know why I'm slowly turning into an accent again. 
First Matilda, then Ethel came into the world, both fair as angels, but on Esther, well, I'll never forget the eve she sat, sat there combing her long chestnut hair while the girls cried and cried. I said to her, love, I reckon the lasses are hungry. That's when she lashed out at me for the first time. Said they'd no right to be hungry. They'd stolen her beauty and her youth. Oh, God. That should be more than enough to feed on. Oh, no. <laughs> well, we know why this uh, wraith happened then. I should have known it then. I should have guessed madness had burrowed into my love's head, and every compliment paid to a lass's beauty made it burrow even deeper. Year by year, the young uns grew taller and more lovely, but time's not so kind to the old, and Ornesta wasn't spare, weren't spared its cruelty, which took her skin spring and its sheen of youth. One night, I awoke by a startling moon, which lit all the world in an eerie glow. I looked around the hut and saw it was empty. I ran out the... Ran out the door and followed a set of bare footprints leading to the cemetery by the chapel, seeing that my heart jumped up into my throat. I found them, all three, lying around the fountain. Were I not been their father, I'd have not recognized them. Deep gashes mutilated their fair faces, strips of skin and hunks of flesh were strewn all about. As I stood beholding this butchery, I had the feeling someone was watching me. And I weren't mistaken. Ornesta stood there on a stool by a lone tree. She had a rope draped round her neck like some demonic necklace. They took it from me. All of it. All I had, all I cherished, she said. Then she jumped. She's dead. My Ornesta, my three daughters, dead as well. I'll soon join them. I've taken all I have and gave it to the gods. Perhaps they'll forgive me and my beloved Ornesta. Ooh, okay. I love this kind of storytelling. I'm a fan of uh, melancholy and tragedy and everything in a weird way. I like Porcupine Tree and Stephen Wilson's work, for God's sakes. But, yeah, that's rough. My favorite ending in this game is the bad ending. What can I say? But yeah, that's rough. Oof. So they were all killed here. Uh, oh, that's these three skeletons. Okay. And I'm guessing that this is then his wife, maybe? Is there a... I don't see any noose or anything that she could have killed herself on here. But I'm assuming this is her body. Because all the other bodies that are here, are like that dude up at the front gate, is like burned to a crisp. So I'm and I'm assuming that that body that's down there it makes total sense I got this stuff off and the body that's in the crypt is the dude the father So then this other dude who's at the front just chilling up here My bro right here is just some random passerby I guess who died All right Yeah so they lived in this very nice mansion Look at the flowers here, even. It's wonderful. And then the mom went insane, killed her daughters, and the dude killed himself, I guess. Or maybe was killed by... ...the wraith. Storytelling. Right. A surprise inheritance. Search the ruined hut cellar. It's actually a fair ways away. Yeah, it's all the way down south. Uh, 
Remember earlier when I said we hadn't seen any Leshens in a while? <laughs> I guess I jinxed myself as I usually do. God, these are always scary. Doesn't matter what level I am, what my gear is. I need relic oil right now. Cursed? Uh, I don't think they're cursed. I think they're relics. Draconid, Ogre, Necrophage, Relic. Where is it? There's no music playing, even. There's no music playing. Why is there no music playing? Come, come on. Where is he? I did not like that sound. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it like started to break apart and then it just ragdolled. That was and the music kicks back and that was good. The fact that there was just no music was very good for that fight. It was random too. I guess it's just this forest that makes these terrifying noises. Good. It sounds very good in my headset. Oh, it's a treasure. Okay. Count Romilly's Journal, Part 2. Last page is torn from Count Romilly's Journal. A pox upon Anastasia von Berman, a pox upon her whole plow and house. I've finally found a way to end this deadly little charade she's put on. The key to unraveling the riddle lay in this dusty tome in my library. That little viperess was marked by a lesion. That is why the monster attacked my castle. There was only one way out of the situation. I snuck up while she slept and throttled her. She didn't even manage to peep. Now I can finally leave my castle walls, thank gods. The monstrosity is skirted off into oblivion along with that accursed child. Huh. We're gonna we're gonna do this. This is a new one that's right here. So there's some there's some stupid stuff that seems to have happened here. Oh god. Is there more? More wolves. Well, that must have happened quite a while ago, because the whole castle's destroyed, and it looks like it's from the work of a lesson because Sigil's here. Look at all the handprints on it. Let me take a look at this. Yeah, let me just take a look at this. There's like all these handprints on it. There's nothing on the back side of it. Take a look at this place in general. It'd be nice if it were brighter out, but that doesn't seem to be possible here. Oh, there's more wolves down here. Lovely. It 
So anything inside this castle? Uh, a lot of unused assets because... Oh, no, 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 no. There is stuff down here. There's an underground. How far up does this go? Okay. Oh, okay. So we enter into here to get into it. Okay. That explains that. All right. Yeah. So it's just a castle that was destroyed by a lesion, I guess. Because of some family affairs and weirdness in dealing with lessons. Oh no, it's spooky. I don't like spooky. Is there a light? spell or anything. I don't that's a dumb thing to say. I don't believe there is. It's kind of just witcher vision and if you find candles, you light them. Okay, so this is like a kidnapping operation. This was uh, human trafficking. This is some dark stuff as well. This is new. Okay, I guess that was... Uh that was the treasure for this place. There's still more rooms in here, though. If anything's in here, there's something down over there. That might be the wolf. Don't scare me like that. Spooky ghosts. Some letter. Hmm. Yeah, you see an amount of human experimentation in this game. You don't just straight up see, like, human trafficking too much in the Witcher world. Too much. You, you see some of it. In the books, you see little. In the game, not too much. Once again, just aside from, like, human experimentation kind of stuff, you're more... A little bit more fantasy-ish kind of dumb things. Not dumb, but you know what I mean. Just... Ooh, that's rough. Uh, a l yeah, your sense of realism is a little bit toned down from it. This was just straight up people being, like, carted away and sold off and ransomed. Yeah, there's nothing in here. Alright, we're done here. Little random side mission. Which is all we're doing today, but this one this one was not planned.
Yeah, I love hearing scary things in my right ear. What was that? Dragon? Yep. Uh, Griffin. Hey! Relax! You made me miss. Man, stop moving! Oh, he's spitting at me. Thank you, finally. Whoa, what just happened with it? Doesn't matter because it's dead, but I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was, but sure. Random Arch Griffin. Things are a little intense out here. Open this. Yep, I guess I can't open unless I step on it. Honeysuckle. The Drakenborg Redemption. Red Dead Redemption 2. I do need to continue that at some point. I I dropped it last year pretty hard. Uh, just because I just lost... It wasn't even like a pessimistic, like, eh, I don't feel like playing this. I just stopped playing it. Just dead stop. Just stopped playing it. Didn't think about it again. <laughs> that happens. It very well does happen with me most of the time these days. I get in the mood to do something, then other things are either happening or my attention is not there. Search the cave. Oh boy, this one's a good ways away. You gotta go to Erd. This thing is so far away. It's all the way across the map. Oh, I like that. Look at the shadow. It's just Geralt levitating. <laughs> the shadow of the land doesn't match with uh, what the sun's doing. That's funny. Uh, I recently got the Spirited Away art book, like the concept art book, which happens to have at the back... I have the entire, like, storyboard with script in Japanese. I've had that for a while now. And I was surprised to see that they have kind of a version of that in the back of the book after all the art concept stuff. But uh, it's entirely different than what the book I have in Japanese is. It's like the book that I have is 
all the actual concept art uh, storyboarding with the script in the way that it would have been like presented on in like little booklets for them to go through while they're reviewing the movie and such. The stuff that's in the art book is a bit more further along in that process. So it's not entirely the same. But uh, I like the art book. It's very, very nice. It was a good read. And I got to translate a lot of it as well to figure out what they were talking about in some of it. Because not all of it's in English. Especially some of the text that's like written on some of the Ghibli art itself. Cool! Brr. Cool, I apparate in and a bear immediately just sideswipes me. I just get- I'm getting mugged by a bear instantly. I bet past me was like, ah, future me can deal with this bear later. Cool. <laughs> that was kind of funny, I'm not gonna lie. Just apparating and just immediately get uppercutted by a bear. The bear trap does not work. Obviously it didn't. It didn't stop him. There are a lot of things down there. I think I might be stopping after, uh, soon. I am hungry, actually. And I have not eaten lunch today. It is 4.40 in the afternoon, and I have eaten literally nothing today. So, I think I'll be stopping soon. Is this not it? Oh, this wasn't even it. This was just a fast travel point. I was like, wait, did the mission clear? This wasn't the mission. This is just a bear. That thing is loud as hell and scary, so I'm running away from it. Of course we got insects or arachnids. We got we got creepy crawlies. More spiders though. What now? Uh, is there gonna be a giant spider in here? I know that's stupid to say, because these are giant spiders, but... Is there gonna be a super spider? I see glowing in the distance. There's something in that room. Hey, I think that thing is back. I'm going to use the camera, and, uh... Uh, try to see what's making that noise. Like, what's going on here? We do have a super spider in here. But I hear that thing that we ran away from... ...somewhere up here as well. I want to see where it is. It's loud. Whatever it is. It's loud enough that I can hear it underground. I just want to see where it is to know if I need to, like, be aware of it or not. We were there. It was, like, up over here. I don't see it, that's a thing.
Oh, there it is. Yeah, this thing's loud as all can be. It looks like something from Pikmin. Right, let's continue. It's above me, that's why. It tried to follow me here. Is it trying to get in here? No, I don't think so. If it does, I'll be terrified because then I, that thing is highly intelligent for a CPU. Not even just as an actual monster, just in the fact that the entity itself knows to, like, try and find me in here. They're like, damn, you got some good enemy so AI. Alright, here's the super spider. Take out the baby. It's just an arachnomorph sized a little high a little more the body will decay what is this oh. money Right, we're gonna have to go outside and fight that thing, aren't we? You think Geralt ever, like, accidentally hurts his hand against that hook he has on the right side of his leg? I feel like he would bang it into that and stab himself accidentally quite frequently. Right. Here we go. Come on, Geralt. Whoa, he's vicious. He's not very strong, but he's fast. And it doesn't seem to really do anything when it hits me with web. Yeah, it wasn't uh, difficult, but man, was it noisy. These are diagrams. We're not doing Toussaint stuff today. I don't know what this is, but go to the school of the Cat Witcher's stash to collect your reward. Is this for that? Dude that we've met in like part 18 that school of the cat witcher I think that was part 18 or something like that I guess there's a little thing associated with that we just never did two years ago sure I'll go do it I don't know what it is it's, it's Apparently, it's a little reward. We'll see how much of a reward it is. Chase the deer. We are the primal hunters in the Witcher world, in the world of the Aeon Shade. Sunflowers. Peasants. Hello. 
Ran uh, Gascoigne and Victor. Curious place for a conversation about art. Anywhere is good for that. It's simply a matter of summoning inspiration. Vodka, for example, is a great aid. Care to drink with us? To poetry? Why not? I am a bit thirsty. And when a man is thirsty, melancholy strangles his soul. Poor Gascoigne! Gentlemen, I am so pickled, crocked, and stewed. <laughs> Want another term for your state? Don't be vulgar. What will our new friend think? Poor another. Fine. Last round for me, though. I was gonna say, we're gonna be like strip Focus naked robbed. Them, as are the troubadours. And my things. Damn it. Ah, the classic drunkard lifestyle. Get absolutely drenched. And have everything of yours stolen. Except your pants and your boots. Are these my normal boots? Yeah. They took like half my Viper gear. <laughs> yeah, they are. Know what rhymes with wicked witcher? My things before I turn you into mince meat. Must be a slant rhyme. Shut your trap and give it back. So then, we are swept, even good. Not quite. We'll be good once you give me your things. All of them? You can keep your knickers. Aberdeen's first decree raises taxes, of course. Oh, I never did this mission. What's the problem? Oh, nothing. On your way now, good man. Shut it, got at. He could help. Little Red's band means to attack the village. Want revenge on Bertram. We haven't much, but we're willing to pay if you defend us. Why does this band want revenge on you of all people? Because... Because I ratted on them to the witch hunters. Witch hunters care about bandits. Since when? Little Red's band. They was terrorizing our village. We had none to defend us. Finally, Bertram went by the hunters, asked them. So the hunters went after him. We had a spell of peace, but now Little Red's learned of it all. Wants to kill Bertram. He's done for if you don't help. Who's Little Red? Word is she fornicates with wolves. Oh. Tear them apart with her bare mitts. A she beast in human husk. Some call her a great beauty. She leads a pack of deserters, true dregs, from different armies. The kind what knows killing and plundering well. Alright, so this is starting to become some furry fanfic. Uh, Sorry, you gotta manage your furries on your own. Nah, we'll help. <laughs> I'll handle the bandits. Go to your homes, bar the doors. Beware of them, Witcher. They're the dangerous type, truly. Wolves are fine. They're not going to be difficult. I've taken down an ice troll. Have you ever taken down an ice troll? Run away! <clears throat> no, you got to find yourself a house. Can I, like, speed up time? Oh, hey, merchant. Can I sell you a few things before we start this? Uh, I like how your voice when you uh, is different than when you talk. Wouldn't mind a look at you. 
farewell. Uh, it's not letting me fight them. Can I, like, leave and then come back? Oh, there we are. Did the villagers hire you? Where did you get alone common with monsters? They did. To defend them from monsters. And humans who can be monsters. And you believe me to be such? Are you? Find out for yourself if you dare. But give me Bertram. No one else will get hurt. What did Bertram do to you to warrant vengeance? Uh, mean they didn't mention this bit? Then listen. He came to me a half year back. Said he'd point out who's worth looting in return for a share of the takings. But sometime on, the bugger grew greedy. He wanted more. I refused. That's when he set the witch hunters on us. Lost half me men because of him. Now step aside, Witcher. This ain't your affair. We want Bertram, no one else. Give my word. Yeah, so I could either help a band of rogues or I could help a village. Don't care much what you say. We're going with the village. Your men and get lost, or there'll be blood. Oh, there'll be blood either way. You just ensured there'll be more of it. And she's a werewolf. Uh, is she a cursed one? It's not a beast. Hybrid is she, I don't know if she's a hybrid or a cursed one. I'm just gonna go with cursed. And a cutter in half. Right through his armor. Like a butt, like a piece of butter. I like how the guard dog did nothing. You failed to mention she was a werewolf. Well, I mean, we wasn't altogether sure ourselves. But that's a good thing. It's what witches are for, innit? Killing monsters. Thanks for your help. This here is well earned. He's a wizard. He just disappeared. <laughs> he just disappeared. Here's your reward. Apparates away. This whole town was just... I killed real people to save a village of ghosts. A mother's letter. Dearest Lily, if you are reading this, it means both your father and I are dead. I have asked Eggward... Eggward? <laughs> Is he the Eggman? I give you this letter only when it is a certain neither of us will return. A great deal happened while you were away at the academy. One of your father's ships sank and we fell into debt. I did not write to you because I did not want to worry you. I did not want you to return. Your education and future what matters to us. Creditors began to call on our loans and refused to accept payments and installments. This is where we were forced to admit that we could not return the entire sum. I swore to destroy us. 
Some thugs have been began following her every step, uh, never letting us out of their sire. It was only a matter of time before the fantasy was discovered. They directed the witch hunters to us, and we were thrown in the dungeon, I guess. Uh, I heard the guards gossiping about how we were to have a show trial and a show execution. I gave one of my wedding rings, and he agreed to allow Edward to visit us. Your father wishes to give us some final instruction. Let's do uh, Okay. In your veins flows the blood of men and wolves, and with that comes responsibility. Forbid you avenge us. That will not bring us life. Only bring you the executions. X, you cannot die. Not in that way. You must prove with your life and conduct that men and lycanthropes can live together in harmony. Okay, I mean, yeah, your daughter completely went a complete different route. Uh, the Academy? Like, was she at the... Was she at, like, the Academy in Oxenford or something, or...? Nothing really lines up with her character and what the note says, so she went off and did whatever she wanted, really, I guess, at some point, and created, like, a band of mercenaries, whether to take vengeance on her parents or just because? Words of the wise of this situation, kids. Do not skip school. Right, we were going to do this one. I'm always curious when the crone music kicks in. It's one of the most ominous songs in the game. And extremely memorable. Hey guys! Lubbers, are we pirates? Oh, you guys are pirate. Oh, he just like had a heart attack. No, he died of his fizz tech addiction, okay. Rusty Velen Sword Blunt Arrow. You guys are terrible. Tiger. Oh, I guess this was his little hideaway. Because there's like trophies and stuff in here. Foglet, ghoul, grave hag. Wonder why he didn't turn in these trophies. Maybe they tried to cheat him then too. All right, yeah. It's just something I hadn't finished for some reason. Uh, I think I'm good for today. I think that's it for today. Just kind of getting a little bit back into The Witcher, a little. And, uh, well, we'll see what is... There's a mission here in Blackbow. Yeah, like at the bridge over there. We'll take a look at whatever that is. That'll probably be the last one for today. <clears throat> uh, speaking of Ghibli, which is kind of associated with Disney, 
I watched Lilo and Stitch the other day and was thoroughly... I, thir I thoroughly impressed and thoroughly in I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was I haven't seen that movie in about a decade, and I enjoyed it way more than I thought. And I had forgotten ab about that movie way more than I thought. Uh, it's a great movie. It's one of those early two thousands Disney movies. It's like the one early two thousand two thousands Disney movie that I personally always forget is a Disney movie for some reason. I just never think of it. I think about Brother Bear, Home on the Range. Uh, Atlantis, Treasure Planet, Emperor's New Groove. I just never think about Lilo and Stitch for some reason. Maybe it's the art style. Everything around that era had kind of more jagged, sharp designs to it, like Tarzan and such, which was 99, but yeah, it's a good movie. Where is this quest? Oh, it's right outside of town. What's the matter? A monster bothering you? Nay, a ghost. Sorry, can't help. Can you tell me anything more? You see. Jackamar haunts my dreams. Jackamar? Jackamar's my husband. Or was till he died at war. He stands by my headboard and wails. So many years apart. I've such woe in the beyond. Come join me. I say, I'll come, Jackamar, but when the gods summon me, not before. Then he says, Leave your wedding ring by me grave. It'll make the whiten lighter. And I'd leave it, were the woods not so terrifying. So, I thought to myself, maybe you. Sure it's your husband's ghost? Are you saying I can't tell me own man? I'm old, but I ain't gone daft yet. Not what I meant. There's wraiths that deceive, assume the form of dead loved ones. Troes, for instance, or dunnies. Nay, I'm sure this is Jackamore. In my dreams, he spoke of our nuptials, how we danced at Bellatine, how the Redanians killed him at Rind. Rind? You've either mixed something up or you're very old indeed. That all happened 80 years ago. Oh, I. Slip of the tongue. Meant to say the Battle of Rivia. I don't trust this old lady. Be glad to help. Where's Jackamore buried? A little cemetery near Blackbow, in a grave neath the old tree. Here, take me ring. Once you've laid it down, come to me for your reward. I live in a hut in the middle of the village with my granddaughter, Lessie. I don't trust this old lady. Where the hell? Hmm. Strange. Aren't we? We're right next to the Peller's hut. Must be Jackamore's grave. All right, that's done. I do want to see, is the ring actually on there? Yeah, we actually do put the ring on here. Take a look at it. As close as we can get, because it seems to cull out at a distance. Yeah, it's just a little... little jeweled ring. Something's about to appear in front of us, I guess. Ooh. Oh, man, I don't have the... Uh, wait, no, I do. I need to equip it. Where is it? Is 
There's the lantern. At last, will ye forgive me? Already have. That's okay. I don't know what that was. It was just, will you forgive me? Sure. There's a dead. There's just a dead dude here. Is there more to that, or was that it? I feel like that was just really brief and random, and I don't understand it. So that seems to be it. That was weird. I didn't pull up the map. Witcher, what brings ye? Lessie, right? Wanted to talk to your grandma. To my... But she's been dead for years. Guess I talked to a ghost. Why wasn't she buried alongside her husband? I can't say for certain. I was a little lass then, but me mum told me that shortly before Grand died, she learned Grandad had kept lovers on the side. She had no desire to lie beside him. Seems she changed her mind. She wanted something to connect her and her husband in the afterlife. Okay. Asked me for help. That explains the ring. Hard to believe. But you've an honest look about you. If you helped Gran, you deserve a reward. Here, take much. I'm afraid it'll have to do. A white one. What's your business? Bloody Baron know you're here? The Baron's dead. Well, I think in this one he's gone. I Did we ever settle the Baron stuff in this game? In this save playthrough? I don't remember. Anyway. Uh because he either kills himself or he goes off on a magical adventure in the wilderness to try and cure his wife. I don't remember what we did. It was two years ago and a long... That's a long time ago. Well, we're done here for today. Next time, maybe we'll do whatever this mission is in Oxenford. I'm just going to warp here just to start off with something for next time. But yeah, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the weird little preamble show of the Through Time and Space mission. And yeah, this is fun. I always enjoy playing The Witcher 3. I love the gameplay, I love the story, the characters, the world, the lore. It is a fun time for me. So thank you, and see you next time. Have a good night.